Hello and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm sure I'm Putin. Welcome to Consider This. This is the show where we want you to consider and then reconsider what you know of the news of the day. Our guest tonight is Dr. Mahesh Arpanen. He is the Head of Data at the Ministry of Health's Crisis Preparedness and Response Centre. Um, Dr. Mahesh, let's begin with what's in the news today. Um, now that mice jatra check-ins are no longer made compulsory, can you perhaps um, share a little bit about how you see mice jatra now being used in the future? How can it be put to better use? Right. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Shura. Uh, my Sajatra is beyond just checking. Okay? Check-in is just one of the 15 modules that we have within my Sajatra. If you would want me to describe more about uh, important features that we have and something really, really close to uh, frontliners and my colleagues on the ground uh, who uses my Sajatra extensively, uh, we I just can zoom down into two, three uh, important modules. Number one is our home assessment module. Number two, our quarantine module. And number three, our vaccination module. So talking about our home, quarant uh, home assessment module, now we have empowered individuals to assess, to test, to report, to monitor and discharge themselves uh, from COVID-19. End-to-end managed digitally. Right? Uh, those were the days where you have uh, heard in the media where we have all our COVID assessment centers inundated with lots and lots of patients. Why? Those patients are just category one, category two A patients where we can manage them uh, at home. And, and at the height of our pandemic, we saw, we saw lots of people, our, our frontliners burning out, just, just too many cases to handle. And that's where this digital solution, my Sajatra came into play where we got everyone uh, managed digitally at home. Second is our quarantine module. Now it's one of a kind in this world where we have got a digital home surveillance order. So we do not use any more papers. Once we have diagnosed someone to have COVID-19, we serve a, a home surveillance order digitally. And there you go, you're at home, you're monitored, you do not go out. And the third one, which is really, really important to us, is our vaccination program. My Sajatra was used end-to-end -to, -end to manage the entire national immunization, COVID-19 immunization program, from the time you book your appointment to the appointment being given to you, to uh, uh, your doses within the app, and a digitally certified app, which connects to a blockchain system, our very own vaccine management system within the Ministry of Health. So, Basically, it's way beyond just check it. Okay, Dr. Um, Maj, um, very fascinating you laid it out for us, you know, these important features. But uh, I think it's re well recognized that there's a digital divide in Malaysia. And, uh, and even if somebody is savvy with uh, devices and th there's a question of uh, connectivity for many Malaysians, how many people are not served by you know the government using this device in the in the manner that you are talking about, what percentage of the population do you think falls outside this? Uh, very very few, sure. Very surprising. If you look at our mobile app penetration, smart mobile app penetration in Malaysia, it's about eighty five percent with our MCMC report. Uh, and the remaining, of course, it's the old age group, the younger age group. One thing it was very fascinating to us and very important to us, how, as, as what Sharad said, how did we manage these people? Of course, we had many other avenues besides my Sajatra for you to uh, be managed, all right? Of course, using our conventional manual method and whatnot. But we have this very important manage dependent feature where as a responsible child, I have got my adults, my uh, digitally illiterate parent uh, in my app where I can report for her if she's positive, I can monitor her status and I can continue and eventually discharge. Not only that, uh, I can also use, uh, for my, use it for my vaccination program. I can register for my parents, I can register for my little baby, uh, little kid who does not own a, a smartphone uh, uh, for, for, for them to, to also uh, enjoy all benefits of uh, uh, this COVID-19 uh, uh, stuff that we do. Okay. Well, okay, so, so you've laid out some of the um, ways in which my Sajatra might continue 
uh, and how it has perhaps shaped some of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic management. But how, you know, I feel like sometimes when we talk about my suggestion, the, the focus almost always is on contact tracing. Um, and again, there are critics who say my Sujatra has failed, particularly at the height of the pandemic, to um, utilize data as well as it should and failed at its role in contact tracing. Can we talk a little bit about that, Dr. Mahesh? How would you respond to those critics? Sure. Very, very important question. When my Sujatra was mooted, the idea was mooted, it was based on a purpose, all right? And the purpose was to augment uh, the management of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, at that point of time, I remember in April 2020, we were already thinking that and forecasting that this pandemic would be um, a, a huge one, a huge long one. So at that point of time, we know that we needed some sort of a digital solution to aid. And uh, out of the three main pillars, the three main objectives, contact tracing was one of them, right? And uh, when we started, of course, uh, we had to do lots of literature search and whatnot, right? And uh, when we talk about digital contact tracing, uh, what comes to our mind, two types of methodology. Number one is using this QR code. Number two is using the famous Bluetooth technology. When we first started, when we compared uh, all sorts of uh, solutions for contact tracing uh, used by many other countries, many countries embarked on a Bluetooth technology. And when we wanted to see, of course, in Malaysia, everything is based on evidence and how to do it, you know, how effective would it be? When we saw, when we saw that uh, there wasn't good take up rate for Bluetooth, you know, people were concerned about, oh, my battery is going to die soon. It uh, takes up lots of my battery and not. Malaysia embarked on this QR code technology, all right? That's where we have almost 3 million premises throughout the country now has got this QR code. And what we need is just for users to register by scanning, right? So as we move on, moved on, we used this data, we used all this behavior of people checking in and started going uh, on, uh, we built an algorithm on notifying exposure. So we notify any individual who's, who, was, uh, who has been exposed to any positive case. And up to today, we had, uh, given out almost 12%, uh, 12 million uh, uh, exposure notification, uh, notifying people on them being casual contacts. And okay, I'm sure yeah, can, can you, Mahesh, could you help us understand that? Because uh, when I use the Mahesh Jatra, I, I, I scan when I enter a premise. I, I don't scan when I leave it. So there's no sense of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, you know, the time frame I'm in that particular premise. The other thing is that, uh, c casual contact, as you put it, 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 could you help define that? Because as we understand the disease better, you know, uh, just walking past somebody might not actually, uh, you know, make you uh, co uh, uh, have a contact of uh, exposure of si some significance, right? So how do, how do you, uh, you know, refine what actually Maise Jato does, which is just to capture your attendance at a space? Okay. So uh, let me go to the definition of co uh, close contact, okay? Of course, casual contact is, uh, is, is a definition derived from close contact. Close contact is via an interview. We have verified this person has been exposed to a positive case uh, who was with him or her for at least 15 minutes, one meter apart, our conventional close contact definition. And how do I get this information? Of course, via interviewing the person. And using Bluetooth technology, because Bluetooth has got both uh, the component, uh, the space component and the time component. Where else is rightly said by uh, Sharad that the QR code only gives you the time component. And if you remember Sharad, at one point of time, we also had a checkout feature within My Sajatra where we removed eventually. Of course, if we've got the checkout time, that increases the accuracy of our contact tracing. Okay, going back to Sharad's question, so what if one registers and goes back? Okay, uh, as I, I want to reiterate again, once a person checks in, we log the time that that person has gone in. And for your information, uh, based on whatever premises that have been registered via MySajatra, we've got some sort of basic uh, uh, demographic uh, details of that particular premise. 
how big is the premise? What sort of, uh, is it a grocery store? Is it a supermarket? Is it a mall and whatnot? So we've built algorithm. For example, uh, a person who checks in into Speed Mart 99, for example, or a very small grocery uh, store. We somewhat would eventually uh, uh, could assume how many people at that particular time uh, uh, could be at that same particular location. So we take the forward and backward tracing, how many other people checked in the same time or a few seconds before and a few seconds above. Of course, this goes into our machine. We train the machine again and again and again, and the algorithm gets perfected. So that, that is how we start sending casual contact notification. So based, just based on the check-in time. Uh, okay. Uh, if, if using that idea that the algorithm betters itself over time, the two years that we've had since the pandemic, is the Mice Jatra today a much better app at contact tracing, at perhaps uh, symptom monitoring? Is it better today because of the usage of millions of users uh, than compared, say, when it first launched uh, in 2020? Of course, absolutely. Absolutely. I can tell you this, right? So uh, just to, uh, to uh, reiterate my point on uh, sending out a casual contact notification, uh, what happens when we send uh, uh, an exposure notification or a casual contact notification? The person would be advised or would be first notified that you have been exposed to a positive uh, confirmed case, number one. Number two, monitor your symptoms. That's it, right? And at the peak of uh, our Omicron wave, right? we had 45% positivity rate, which means the number of people who have been given a casual contact uh, a notification actually had symptoms or they tested and they became positive. And there you go, end-to-end -end management within the app. They need okay. not come. That's why when you look at our Omicron wave, yes, it peaked in mid-March, but it went down really fast. Okay, of course, other strategies played an important role <laughs> Okay, Dr. Mahesh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and continue this conversation in just a couple of minutes. Stay tuned to consider this. Thanks so much for staying with Sharad and I on Consider This. Let's continue our conversation with Dr. Mahesh Arpan and he is the head of data at the Ministry of Health's Crisis Preparedness and Response Centre. Dr. Mahesh, coming back to um, something that was said just before the break, um, you pointed out that this app has evolved over the past two years. The algorithm has gotten better. What then do you say to those who propose to junk the app completely? and rebuild, start from scratch, getting all the principles and the basics of uh, data and privacy and ownership and security, all of that correct? Okay, so uh, what I would say is, again, my Sajatra check-in was just one module. And we have repeatedly said, uh, uh, Minister, Ministry of Health, uh, uh, Government of Malaysia, we've said that uh, uh, whatever we have right now, it's... It, it was so much work put in by uh, lots of people uh, to where it is right now. And uh, with almost 38 million users, with uh, just not check-in, uh, we have so many other modules, we have to use our current uh, MySajatra. We do not need to reinvent the wheel. Okay, We, not, we need not reinvent, uh, need to uh, reinvent the wheel. We have everything needed for us to sustain. What we need now is, of course, we are transitioning into endemicity. But we have to be always on the lookout. Right, right. now, we yeah. already... Yeah, Mahesh, you know, the one thing, though, I mean, before we move on to other matters, is the issue of ownership. And, uh, and critics claim that, in fact, a lot of local talent and ministry talent and individuals uh, helped build the system. But now it's being, as it were, sold back to the Malaysian public uh, at a very high cost. If it was junked and you had to rebuild it, would it be difficult, considering that there's already local talent in-house at the ministry, though, I mean, the critics also say the ministry's uh, digital arm is not uh, as substantial as it ought to be. 
how do you respond to that? Okay, uh, I think uh, when we when we look into uh, uh, the current era of technology, it's always, uh, of course, good to have you know it inbuilt. At the heights of pandemic, right? How do I start building a new thing from scratch? Time is of essence. What we need to do is to get a ready product. That was what uh, that was what uh, was done, right? We got a ready product, and and there you go. Within two weeks, we managed to deploy. And of course, as time goes on, learning from new uh, behavior, best practices, and whatnot, we kept on building. And yes, of course, we want to have uh, inbuilt uh, systems. But when we already have this, but but again, I would like to say yes, we own my Sajatra. The IP belongs to us. The data belongs to the government. Everything is us. And after it expires, the contract expires, of course, we would always, uh, we can at any point of time port on to a new, uh, a new system. May it be us buying another uh, or procuring uh, another uh, ready uh, system, or we can, of course, build from scratch again. I mean, that, that depends on how are we pay, what, what are we exactly are we paying for the, uh, this uh, outsourced uh, app? Do you know okay. what exactly is, and is the contract about every uh, uh, additional user? Uh, how exactly is the pricing? And what will be the total package uh, for the use of my Sajatra? Okay, uh, to be really honest, I'm not very privy to uh, what uh, is the procurement process. And of course, I, what I can say now, the, what is uh, uh, published in the media on 300 million and all that is not true. So uh, uh, now, of course, uh, what we need is always uh, we have to uh, ensure we uphold the interests of the government, the people and not. And uh, negotiation is still uh, ongoing and probably we have to wait till everything is over. And I can assure you it's, it's not like what is it, it's reported right now. Is my suggestion going to be an exclusively COVID-19 app? Do you see my Sajatra incorporating other diseases, monitoring, surveillance, uh, information dissemination of other diseases in Malaysia? Point on, as a public health practitioner uh, who's uh, you know, uh, passionate about public health, uh, we have created one solution, which is uh, what we have been envisioning for a very, very long time. As, uh, as, as uh, the great saying goes, uh, every crisis, uh, you have a great opportunity. We have this right now. And of course, uh, Melissa, if you look into every single module that we have in My Sajatra, it's replicable. And something is going to come up on the 28th, uh, which would be pushed, a new version uh, of My Sajatra, just a function on hotspot tracker. Okay, that was a very popular feature before vaccination and all came about within My Sajatra, is to show you the number of COVID-19 cases in your surrounding that gives you or probably potentially would impact behavior so like now i'm going to go back for raya for holidays before i go back i have to ensure that okay uh, i have to be vigilant enough on the uh, happenings around me what sort of infectious disease uh, is there around me and whatnot besides that our vaccination program we can start having our vaccination registry and and we can do just so many things with uh, uh, what we have built right now yeah, so my just a follow on on uh, Melissa's question. What other diseases we know that dengue is endemic, and uh, if I'm not cor uh, incorrect, sorry, if not, if I'm not correct. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Rather, uh, dengue kills two people a day on average. Uh, we also have a resurgence of tuberculosis in this country. Uh, sometimes, uh, as it's been said, it's centered around prisons and detention centers. Is that it, are these apps uh, available? Uh, for that kind, those kinds of diseases. Yes, yes, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Okay, for example, dengue. It's all all about empowering people. How do you prevent this disease? Yes, you're right. Dengue, chikungunya. You have uh, uh, you have tuberculosis, which is rising. You have rabies now in in Slango. You know cases like this. How do we now? Uh, I mean, when you talk about public health uh, prevention, public health intervention. Of course, we look look at prevention. How do we educate our people? How do we give real-time information to our people? How do we empower them to be uh, at, at their fingertips all the time? What's happening around me? And how can they uh, uh, help us fight whatever endemic disease uh, that we have uh, in the country?
You led the uh, digital response, the digital health team for this pandemic. And I'm just wondering, uh, something you said earlier struck me, me having to say that, you know, we don't have to reinvent. There was really no time to invent something new at the start of the pandemic. Uh, so surveillance apps like this, uh, health apps like this, was, I think, new to many countries, Malaysia included. When you look abroad, when you look at other countries, Dr. Mahesh, what do you see of how they are repurposing, reusing their COVID-19 apps um, that perhaps might be applicable to Malaysia. And I'm wondering how then the Ministry of Health might incorporate that to have a more digital forward thinking when it comes to public health policy. Okay, uh, I, I, we are actually proud to say Malaysia has, has one of the most robust apps uh, around. Okay, if we, uh, the nearest uh, app that we can compare uh, with uh, would be our NHS app. So again, I, I, I would like to say that we have 15 modules all in one. So, you know, data, just a single data, a single information doesn't go good. You need to combine it with so many other information for us to have beautiful insights, for us to have data-driven decision-making. Right. So now uh, if you compare, yes, many countries are repurposing their apps to towards uh, having all sorts of uh, other uh, endemic diseases within. Uh, for example, our neighbor, we have uh, Singapore who has got traced together and uh, no more check ins anymore, uh, uh, similar to us in Malaysia. And uh, they are still maintaining their uh, uh, Bluetooth component. So because contact tracing is an integral part in public health, in managing any outbreak. So we cannot, uh, for example, at one point of time, we've been sending notification to almost 300,000 people that you have been exposed to a COVID-19 case, right? Things like this cannot be done by humans, by my, my, my friends on the ground. So we, there, there must be an aid, uh, there must be help uh, via this digital... Uh, okay, so Mahesh, one thing that we've discovered is that uh, despite two years of this uh, global pandemic and Malaysia losing over 30,000 people uh, in the process, there's been no significant boost to our health care in terms of the budget. And in fact, one of the, uh, you know, I think, most serious criticisms uh, ha coming out of this pandemic is that we've suffered from decades of d underfunding the health care system. In okay. your position... What would you like to see money spent on? How could it be spent better and how could it, the ministry be organized better to deal with the next pandemic? My personal opinion, Malaysia has one of the best healthcare systems. Despite decades of defund, uh, underfunding? Yeah, okay, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> right, we are, Sharad, we are, we have one of the best healthcare systems. Yes, I agree with you. We are underfunded. I mean, is our ICU bed uh, um, ratio to population optimal? I okay. mean, how are you making that uh, uh, this uh, assertion? You see, uh, depends on where you would want to allocate that resource. Okay, right now, when you look at uh, our public health uh, expense, right? Uh, of course, a lot of people, uh, or our government, we focus lots on curative medicine. And now it's definitely a learning process, Sharon. Now with uh, this uh, pandemic, it's an eye opener. So now we have to allocate our resource better. For example, uh, we have to empower or probably look into uh, uh, enhancing our public health system, providing more funds within our public health system. Uh, uh, eventually, I do not want to see my patients in the ICU. I would want to reduce uh, people getting into the ICU. How do I do that? Everything goes down to primary health care. So now, it's again, it's a learning process. Of course, uh, now we know how to manage uh, better. And I'm looking at uh, uh, brighter days ahead and how our government now is looking into uh, funding our ministry much better uh, and providing you know, more insights, more, more, uh, more, more ideas, more resources towards uh, en enhancing our pr uh, primary class. Very quickly, in the last minute that we have left, can I follow up with that? How might uh, digital data-driven uh, come uh, help primary healthcare at that level? Oh, uh, massive, right? So now, uh, again, it's just not the government. It's just not Ministry of Health. It's individuals. It's individuals. It's the family. It's the community. Now, uh, the ball, the court is in your hands. The 
public sense. It's just not always Ministry of Health. So now, with uh, of course, with the good uh, funding and good uh, strategies in place within the primary healthcare system, uh, we have the people together with us. And uh, uh, whatever data that we have, uh, now we're moving into non-communicable diseases. Right. And uh, of course, everything revolves on data. Well, I think that last question can have opened up another new episode of Consider This. So we'll have to have you back. Thank you so much for speaking with us. That was our conversation with Dr. Mahesh Appanen, Head of Data at the Ministry of Health's Crisis Preparedness and Response Centre. That wraps up this episode of Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutun, signing out for the evening. Thank you so much for watching and good night.